Hidden San Francisco, the guide to lost landscapes, unsung heroes, and radical histories. Entry E17, Yosemite Slough and Candlestick Point State Recreation Area along the Hunter's Point Expressway. Along the southeastern shoreline of the bay, within San Francisco city limits, sits a forgotten creek and wetland now called Yosemite Slough. In the 1920s and 1930s, this area had some of San Francisco's most pristine bayshore beaches. In particular, a beach beneath the bluffs at the end of Egbert Street was once a much-loved childhood play area. But World War II led to an intense and toxic industrialization of this neighborhood. Yosemite Creek, with its headwaters in McLaren Park, recently restored, was culverted in the 1910s when most San Francisco waterways were buried beneath city streets and combined with sewage outflows. Adjacent to the naval shipyard's most toxic parcels, the eastern end of the Bayview neighborhood also housed a number of small metal shops and other industrial sites, all of which left behind a toxic stew in the ground. Several national Superfund sites dot the area today, and memories of beaches and access to a healthy bay are long forgotten. Along the southern shore of Yosemite Slough and due east of the former stadium site sits Candlestick Point State Recreation Area the only urban state park in California. It is built on 100% landfill. Few remember now that the Candlestick Point Park was created by a neighborhood campaign, some of whom remembered the old shoreline before development, while others saw the junkyard and debris that had accumulated offshore as an opportunity to create something special. Urban scavengers and artists built weird sculptures, and even for a time, a curious Stonehenge built of concrete pieces and rebar took shape out there. Eventually, the predominantly African-American neighborhood pushed in public hearings for a natural park that would bring the bay shore and the bay into neighborhood reach. A park that had space for nature, for birds and seals and mudflats, public art and unplanned uses, was prioritized over basketball courts and ball fields. And new beaches were created that are today in heavy use on any given weekend or holiday, along with numerous barbecue pits that dot the park. Ironically, perhaps bitterly, the gentrification pressure on Bayview is leading to a demographic shift even in the last black San Francisco neighborhood. As people cash out and move away, the population, once the largest percentage of homeowners in the city, is changing. The new shoreline parks in Yosemite Slough and North and India Basin are slowly taking shape after decades of deindustrialization and also as part of the Bay Rim Trail. There is a general rethinking of the Bay Shore going on. In spite of inevitable sea level rise, parks, wetlands, and publicly accessible space have been created all along the bayshore. The painful irony is that most of the people who once lived near here, thanks to the inexpensive housing, are being pushed out and will not get to enjoy the improved, more accessible shoreline. <laughs>